The politician tipped as a future Prime Minister of New Zealand has admitted ordering porn movies using his taxpayer-funded credit card. Labour MP Shane Jones is one of the worst offenders caught out in the expenses scandal engulfing Parliament. MPs from both Labour and National are involved and the spending includes big bills for booze, dinners, travel and even massages. Political editor Guyon Espin has been sifting through the boxes of documents. He joins us now. Guyon. Good evening and sifting through boxes like this, eight boxes like this full of ministerial credit card statements were delivered around the parliamentary press gallery this morning. Now buried within these boxes was spending by Shane Jones, spending which may well have buried his chances of ever rising to the top of the Labour Party. Shane Jones once walked tall as a future leader, today he hangs his head in humiliation. This is Shane's day of shame. I let my colleagues down. Um, I've deeply uh, injured my wife. Um, God only knows what my mother's going to say. Shane Jones did plenty of ministerial travel and watched plenty of movies. Some of those movies, I'm, I have to put my hand up, they were adult movies. About 20 hotel movies were charged to his ministerial credit card. How could he possibly have thought that putting pornographic movies on a ministerial credit card was appropriate? I just lost the plot. The plot to this story is pretty simple. Between 2007 and 2008, Shane Jones used his ministerial credit card like it was his own personal card. At Rebel Sport, he spent $135 on sports gear. At the warehouse, he bought four CDs worth nearly $50. At Farmers, he spent nearly $100 on a belt, batteries and shavers. His expenditure was unacceptable. It was outside the rules. Uh, he has let himself down and he has let uh, the taxpayers down. And it's not as though Shane Jones wasn't warned. The documents show officials constantly warned his office he was breaking the rules. To avoid any potential embarrassment for your minister, we would ask that all these outstanding issues be resolved urgently, especially given the upcoming election and change of administration. Now the National Administration has released his spending among 7,000 pages of credit card statements and Shane Jones faces an uncertain future. But you're not going to resign? No, 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 no. What I'm going to do is restore my credibility, rebuild my stocks and, um, yeah, watch more BBC. Rebuilding this bruised career, though, may take more than a change in viewing habits. Guy, well, a short time ago you said he'd buried his chances of ever leading the Labour Party, so is this the end of Shane Jones's political career? Well, the short answer to that is no. He's not resigning. He's not being asked to resign. So he does have a future of sports. It's just a question of what that future is. And, uh, yeah, he, his chances of, of leading to the La Labour Party or rising to the top of the Labour Party must surely now be in tatters. His first priority, as you heard there, is to rebuild himself, rehabilitate himself within the party. I guess one thing he did right today was front up. That'll help him. A million MPs would have run a mile from uh, those sorts of revelations that he actually did actually front up over. So that will help him a little bit. The wider problem for Labour is that this involves other Labour MPs as well and quite severely. This severely restricts their chances of getting up in the House and criticising National over any spending that they are doing. Thanks for that Guy and stay there, we'll come back to you in a moment. Well, Shane Jones is one of the worst offenders but some of his colleagues are also in the gun for putting personal spending on their taxpayer plastic. Deputy political editor Francesca Mould looks at them and the rules they're supposed to follow. Raiding the hotel minibar long liquid lunches. Buying fresh fruit for the office and beautiful bouquets as gifts. No, they're not the rorts. Some of that's actually okay under the rules. They state the credit card should only be used for official ministerial purposes. Receipts should be provided and the spending should be able to withstand audit and taxpayer scrutiny. There's certainly scrutiny of Chris Carter's apparent penchant for day spas. His hotel bill records him spending $157 on massages at the Raffles Hotel in Cambodia and $66 for a spa treatment at the Hyatt. He says he paid for that himself, but he is now reimbursing taxpayers for one of his staff's pampering treatment. They may seem trivial things, but actually I think it's really important that, that it be squeaky clean. He's paid back $251 for items, including flowers for his partner and hotel in-room movies. When you're jet lagged and it's really difficult to sleep, you watch a movie sometime. It's taste buds that dominate Parikura Horomiya's spending, some of it apparently legit, like $750 on an official function at a Chinese restaurant. But another $463 on a meal there, he later had to repay a big chunk of. I don't think there wouldn't be a day that I wouldn't be on the road or in the office uh, doing the business and, 
and uh, monarching people or cup of teas or luncheons or dinners was very much part of the business. Another fine diner, Judith Tizard, splashed out $155 on a bottle of Bollinger at Auckland's Chin Chin restaurant to go with her meal of salmon, tuna and fresh figs. It's staying trim and taunt that's caught Mitadiranui out, swiping the card for a $900 bike and golfing equipment worth $682. The spending was quickly repaid, but the political damage for putting it on the plastic may linger much longer. Francesca Mould, One News. And it's not just Labour MPs who are feeling the heat. Trade Minister Tim Grosser has been a big spender too. Since becoming a minister in November 2008, Tim Grosser has spent more than $1,400 on alcohol. It includes around $450 racked up in one week on the mini bar and hotel bar while he was at the Copenhagen Climate Change Conference. All right, let's bring Guyon back in again. Tim Gross is spending also under question, Guyon. So are things any different now? Nationals in power? Good question. I mean, Tim Gross's uh, booze bills have been attracting some attention, no doubt about that. We asked Prime Minister John Key about those booze bills today, and here was his reaction. By and large, ministers are within the rules allowed to have the odd drink, and um, from what I've seen with Mr Gross, it's tended to be one drink out of his mini bar a day, uh, one alcoholic drink, and I think that's probably OK. Uh, but I, I would make the point, and I've cautioned my ministers, I do think that they need to be responsible with taxpayers' money. And it is true that rules have tightened up under National over the last year or so. They have had their issues with Phil Heatley and Bill English, but they have tightened the rules somewhat. Now, the main factor of that, not that National's any better than Labor, but that there is more scrutiny nowadays. You see, the screeds information has come out now, and we have a uh, regular release of information about MPs' expenditure. So that's probably the main factor about why National is actually being a bit tighter with its spending than Labor was. That is not to say there might not be some more shockers from National. There's 7,000 pages of documents here. I can't promise that I've read all of them. Happy reading at Parliament Political Editor Guy.